Back in the elastic load balancing section of the course, I mentioned that you can have a lambda function as a target for an elastic load balancer, so specifically for an application load balancer, an ALB. So what I want to do is just show you in this lesson how to configure a lambda function as a target for an ALB and a bit more background information that you might need to know for the exam. So the idea is that an internet client connects over HTTP or HTTPS to an application load balancer. And then the application load balancer passes the content of the request in JSON format to the Lambda function. And then the Lambda function will execute and return a response. So ALBs support Lambda functions as targets. You can register your functions as targets and configure a listener rule to forward requests to the target group for your Lambda function. And you can do this key exam question here, you can do this through the CLI, the API, or the management console. So when the load balancer forwards the request to the Lambda function, it invokes the function and passes the content of the request in JSON format. Now there are a few limits that you need to be aware of. The function and target group have to be in the same account and the same region. The maximum size of the request body is one megabyte, and the maximum size of the response that the function can send is one megabyte. WebSockets are not supported either, so upgrade requests are rejected with a HTTP 400 code. So let's go into the console, and we're gonna create a Lambda function, and then we're gonna create a load balancer and specify our function as a target. So in the Lambda console, I'm gonna create a new function that I'm gonna call my ALB target. And let's choose create function. And I'm just gonna scroll down. I'm gonna delete out all of this code and I have my own code that I'm gonna paste in. And this is just going to return the information in the correct format and output this statement, this Lambda function is behind an application load balancer. So let's save the code. And now I'm gonna to head to EC2, load balancers, and let's create a load balancer. I'll just call it my ALB. And I'm gonna add two listeners. So one's gonna be HTTP and the other is going to be HTTPS. And this is one of the reasons why you might want to use an application load balancer with Lambda because it helps you to put that secure layer in front of it. It's also useful for if you want to use complex rules. So I'm gonna leave it in the default VPC, select a couple of public subnets, choose next, now I already have a certificate here, so I can choose a certificate from ACM. I'll use the dctlabs.com certificate and then click next, change the web access security group. And I'm gonna create my new target group. I'll just call this TG1, specify Lambda function, and then let's go next to register targets. And here we get to choose our function. So we wanna choose my ALB target and we can then specify a version or an alias. We only have the latest version, so we just okay that one, and then create this load balancer. Now, while that's provisioning, I'm just gonna head over to Route 53 because we've got that certificate, so let's just use the dctlabs.com domain name. And while that's provisioning, I'm going to go to Route 53 and head to my dctlabs.com domain name and I'm gonna create a new record set here because we're using that certificate for dctlabs.com. So let's create an alias and assign the alias to our application load balancer. So we can already see my ALB. So it's gonna be, there's gonna be no name in there, just dctlabs.com alias, and then the target is gonna be the load balancer. And let's choose create. Now health checks are optional, but we can enable them for a Lambda function as well. So for instance, I can go in here and enable a health check, leave it at slash and click on save. And then we'll actually see it going through the various stages of initializing and becoming ready. So we can see now it's in an initial state and registration is in progress. And a few seconds later, we have a healthy target. So let's now go back to our load balancer, take the DNS name and let's try and connect to the load balancer and sure enough we get this lambda function is behind an application load balancer 
And hopefully now we can also connect via the dctlabs.com domain name using HTTPS. And sure enough, we get the same result. So that's great, that's worked. So that's how you configure a Lambda function as a target for a load balancer. Now don't forget that load balancers do cost money. So you wanna come back in here when you finished and choose delete and that will delete your load balancer. I hope you enjoyed that guys. See you in the next lesson.